Well, aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Master Paul, very happy to be connecting with you today. It is Thursday, 9 a.m. in Hawaii, and it is May 10, 2018. And I believe we're shortly closing in on a um, Mother's Day. So, for those mothers, love you, love you, love you. Thank you for all that you do. And that goes for all women because all women are mothers on some level. So, thank you. So, thank you all for joining today. Uh, for those that are just tuning in either live now or on a shared uh, video when this gets posted into groups, today's subject is how to bring healing to any relationship, including the ones with yourself. Simple steps. Um, oftentimes the simple ones are the hardest ones to apply, but it doesn't mean that they're ineffective. Uh, it just means we have to be conscious to apply them. So hopefully you'll be able to stick around for some of this wisdom. Uh, a lot of what I share is from my spiritual teacher, Master Shaw. And some of what I share is from life experience. Um, having gone through some unpleasant experiences uh, in relationship, I've learned a lot. And then when I went, I've been now on a, a dedicated 30-year spiritual path and having trained under several masters, you tend to get quite a bit of additional wisdom. I also have a book uh, called Soulmate Karma. And although this entire communication is not about soulmates, there's some wisdom in there that can also be applied. So, hopefully, if that's of interest to you, you will be able to stick around. And uh, if you want to listen more but got to run, then make sure you like and subscribe, and you can always come back to my Facebook page. Okay? So, we got some folks joining in this morning. Uh, set up my comfort zone here. Make an adjustment here. Uh, that's a little bit better. Okay. Let's see who's joined us so far today. Welcome, Pamela Carmo. Welcome also to Maddie DeGaio. Welcome, Jitendra. Welcome also to Pamela. And uh, that would be Elder Pamela Walker. Welcome, Dave V. Welcome also to Lisa Prado. Aloha. Hannah Moise and welcome Vanessa welcome also Lisa Carter and Shunag Sitar Aloha and welcome welcome also to Archana Pawa and welcome Nikki Garbadi welcome Kathy Arnold so thank you all for clicking on the share button and letting other people know about today's live stream uh, last uh, Tuesday Seems like a week ago, I actually have to stop and remember what the live stream was about. But I'm sure it had something to do with balancing our uh, spiritual nature. <laughs> um, so today we're going to be focusing on relationships. Now there are all kinds of relationships. There are our personal relationships, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. There's the lack of personal relationship, which often has to do with our relationship with self. There is, of course, relationship with our children. There is relationship with our parents, relationship with our brothers and sisters, relationship with co-workers. Our life is a living relationship for many of us. And there can be quite a few um, sufferings. Now, some of us have figured out how to navigate relationships uh, and <laughs> we do things like uh, push away the ones that, that we can't deal with and keep the ones that we can. Um, and that's okay. I understand that. I'm not saying that's not the right choice. Uh, just sometimes it is and maybe sometimes it's not. Um, also, some of us find ourselves in some very uh, unpleasant relationships in one or two of areas of our life. And in other areas, we're doing just fine. And so you want to take a look at why in those one or two areas of life is this relationship difficult. Now that could be with the kids, could be with one of three children, whereas the other two you get along just fine. So it's kind of curious um, why it's very uh, spotty. Uh, 
Now, there are a few people out there that they just can't seem to get along with anybody. Um, and you know who you are. And, and typically, um, if you know who you are, it's everybody else's problem. <laughs> and that, of course, is not true. So that's difficult. That person that just heard that probably is going to turn me off right now because the last thing they want to hear is that it's their problem, not everybody else's. So relationships can be very, very difficult. In essence, we are in a world in which we need to communicate with others. We must um, keep our hearts open and um, work with others. You know, if, we, if the world was in turmoil, you know, far greater turmoil than it is already, where there was a significant calamity, um, I think the last thing on your mind would be getting along with that person. Uh, if, if they were saving your life or you were saving their life, or one of you had food and the other one had water, um, I doubt that the, uh, the first thing on your mind would be the relationship turmoil with that person. And so it leads back to the reality, which is a lot of it happens in our heart and in our mind. Um, whereas if we're moving to a survival mode, all of a sudden all that stuff goes away. So... You know, some people say, I just can't get over it. I just can't resolve it. I just can't this. I just can't that. Well, I disagree. I believe that anybody in any relationship uh, can move through it with love. So we're going to go over today a couple of um, key common sense things that can be applied. Now, you're going to be in full agreement with the common sense things. That's not going to be the hard part. Uh, you'll, you'll have full agreement with what is being said. The hard part will actually be applying them. And it won't be because it's hard. No, it's actually quite easy to do. It'll be because of the patterns that you'll be asked to move through and past. The patterns uh, in any communication um, are difficult to move through and past once they've built up a a layer of response mechanism. So the longer you've been with somebody, whether it's in a long-term relationship or a child or a brother or sister, um, you've developed a way of communicating with each other. And it's part defense pattern, it's part support, uh, it's part protective. Uh, there's a lot of variables in there. And it's not as easy as one would like to think to, to be able to stop those patterns and replace it with something as simple as these steps that I'm going to recommend, because these steps are extremely simple. So the first thing is to have a willingness, literally have a willingness to stop the default knee-jerk response pattern. So that's what you can expect today. So let me acknowledge who else has joined us, and then we'll invite in all the beings of light. So welcome also to Kathy Arnold, welcome Archana, welcome Nikki Garbodi, welcome Sharon Saxby, welcome and aloha to Derba DeLuca, Tali Ayers, aloha and welcome to Priti Maheshwari, and welcome also to Teresa Van Marik, and aloha and welcome Lisa Carter, welcome Sharon Dodd. Welcome, Phyllis Casper. Thank you all for clicking on the share button. So let us invite in the beings of light, and then we'll prepare for today. Dear our beloved Divine Creator, all layers of the Divine Tao Source, all of the beings of light serving the planet of the light side, including the angels, healing angels, archangels, the masters and ascended masters, the gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, all Buddhas, all bodhisattvas, dear beloved Jesus, Mother Mary, dear beloved Buddha, dear beloved Amitofu, Kuan Yin, Da Shudra Kusa, Ling Wei Sheng Shi, our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, we love you all, honor you all, respect you all. And I bow my head to each and every one of you. We ask your presence at this time to please assist in whatever way is most appropriate to bless each and every one of us to awaken more to our soul's purpose here, to realize that each and every relationship we have has some karma associated with it. Good karma, some not so good karma. Please bless us to further awaken to this understanding and bless us to respond using these simple steps 
in our relationships, to bring healing to them, to bring healing to ourselves, to let go of old and past patterns that no longer serve us. Please bless us to transform these blockages as easily and effortlessly as possible and to bring peace and calm into our self-relationship and our relationship with others. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony, transmitted to all souls and all universes, we love you, we honor you, respect you. We ask you to please turn on. And we invite all souls and all universes to chant with us the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace and Harmony. So for anybody new tuning in, watching this uh, after the fact, this is a mantra. It is also a healing mantra, and I highly recommend you download it. Uh, you can also get the app. It's in the app stores, uh, and it's called Love, Peace, and Harmony. And this song is exceedingly, exceedingly valuable. It should be played in your room 24-7. You can learn more at Love, Peace, and Harmony app or lovepeaceharmony.org. So let us chant, connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Lu la lu la li Lu la lu la la li Lu la lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Lu la li lu la Wo ai wo xin er ling Wo ai tran ren lei Wang ling rong er mu shir shong Xiong ai ping an e xie Xiong ai ping an e xie I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome Shilpa Rao. Welcome Stan Dabian. Welcome um, Dr. Rupal. And welcome also to Catherine O'Shea, Mahendra Patel, Aloha Vanessa Laval. And if anybody's name I missed, Aloha and welcome. Thank you for coming. So today, Relationships. And some simple steps to bring balance to them, make them a bit happier and healthier. As I have spoken earlier, there are many different kinds of relationships. There is our family relationships. Family is uh, overall function. And this is important because even though we have an individual uh, communication with our spouses, our children, um, uh, even our parents, brothers and sisters, that's family. Um, we have individual communication and we have an entire family communication. And they're two different dynamics. Then we have, for example, external relationships, uh, friends, coworkers. There's, of course, uh, other forms of relationships. But this wisdom can be applied to all of them. So, almost all of us have at least one person in our life where we have some relationship difficulties with. It doesn't seem to be hard to find. Uh, and if you don't have relationship difficulties with anybody, check against yourself. Do you have relationship difficulties with self? Do you find yourself being negative towards yourself, um, saying unpleasant things to or about yourself? Okay, This is also a relationship. And the wisdom that I'm going to share with you today can be applied. Some of it's simple psychology. Some of it is spiritual wisdom from Master Shaw. And the combination of the two go a long way to assist us. So the first thing to understand is why do we have relationship blockages? Why do we have, uh, for example, two or three children and we get along with two of them, but one of them is just constant thorn in our side? Why uh, do we have um, great relationship with mom, but not such a good relationship with dad. Why do we have uh, a relationship with a spouse, 
um, that uh, was great, but maybe not so great now, and so forth. There's always an answer. Now, the short version of it is, of course, what my spiritual teacher uh, shares is karma. It's very simple, karma. Um, if you tend to believe in more than one life, that makes this explanation a whole lot easier. But if not, that's okay. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that from the moment of our birth, our personalities begin their formation. And we're actually being... Um, uh, What's the word? You know, kind of like we're a piece of marble that uh, is being carved on two different sides. So imagine yourself, you're born, you're a square piece of marble, and on one side, your parenting, your peers, your brothers, your sisters, and all those in your environment are carving one half of the block. On the other half of the block, you can't see what's being carved, but there's another part. And that other part is um, the karma. And it is directing the way the block is being carved. Okay, it's an invisible director, if you will, of how the block is being carved. So our karma is the record of our thoughts, words, and actions from all lifetimes. Uh, you could end up in a romantic relationship, for example, and it's perfect the first three or four years, and then it goes south for the winter, and you've been trying to save it for the last ten years. Okay? Um, you could have a couple of children and get along great with some and not with one. You could have uh, four siblings and get along with two and the other two, uh, you know, one of them doesn't give you the time of day and the other one's always in your face. So why? Why, 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 why? Karma. Very simple. The reason anybody enters your life is because there is um, wisdom to be learned or gained and growth to be earned from it. The good, positive, beneficial, loving, and supportive relationships, they are also karmic. Uh, who doesn't want more good, loving, positive, supporting relationships, right? We all do. Who wouldn't want that? And those enter our life to support us. The not-so-pleasant ones enter our life also to support us, as painful as that may sound. Um, they're there to help us to grow. Because from the, from the perspective of the spiritual perspective on this, there is a reason for everything. There is never an accident. And so that that individual, that sibling, brother, sister, wife, husband, child, that is the proverbial thorn in your side, they are also there to bless you. Because if you don't figure it out this time around, guys, guess what? You're going to get nailed again next time around. So you got a simple choice. Figure it out this time or deal with it next time. That's your two choices. And so a lot of people stick their head in the sand. They say, oh, just you know, get rid of it. Okay, that's one choice. Now, figuring it out doesn't mean make it work. If the person's an SOB, a uh, very unpleasant person, that doesn't mean you have to, to make it work. It means you have to clear the conditions that, that brought this SOB into your world. Okay, uh, If it's someone where you cannot clear them out of your world, uh, for example, like a sibling or a child, they're going to be with you for the rest of your living years. And so if you don't deal with it, they're going to be with you next time around too. So yay. So you have opportunity and you have wisdom and will be given additional wisdom today so that you can not have that suffering moving forward. But it's up to you if you want to deal with it. And so the first aspect of this understanding is recognizing the what I have seen to be a truth, you don't, certainly don't have to agree with it, uh, of karma. And when we deal with the recognition that any relationship that's in our life, good relationships, good karma. Not so pleasant relationships, well, not so pleasant karma. When you set that foundation up, you can do a lot to bring healing to these relationships. So let me welcome a few more people who just showed up. Welcome also to Erica. Welcome Christina. Uh, welcome to um, Jen Christie. Aloha to Inkin Keller. Welcome Jennifer Hewlin. Welcome also to Sherry Lee Hartree. And Aloha Rena Singh. Thank you all for clicking on the share button letting the people know about this. So what is the first step then? Well, the first step is recognition that I'm not enjoying 
because you know which relationships you enjoy. I'm not enjoying this relationship with A, B, C. And I have to take responsibility for at least 50% of this. Doesn't mean you're the person that made them a very unpleasant communicator, but it does mean they're in your life for a reason, not your 50%. Okay? Second thing is, how do I deal with it in a way that dissolves, dissolves the karmic blockage? Because if we can dissolve the karmic blockage, So I'm seeing a couple people say no sound. It's got to be a Facebook issue. Uh, my audio is working fine. Hopefully this is will self-resolve. Once we address that one, two, three, or four relationships in our life that are out of balance, it will positively impact the rest of your life. Think about it. If you have one parent that is constantly drilling down on you, um, doesn't that impact your relationship with your spouse? Wouldn't that impact your relationship at work? It actually, it's like somebody with one foot on you and you can't seem to stand up on your own and move forward. So one of the things that you have to recognize is that when we have a relationship issue in any one person in our life that's you know significant to us definitely impacts our emotions it absolutely impacts the other relationships don't even think for a second it doesn't impact the other relationships because it does so these are motivations to where you should really be interested in this wisdom okay so the first step recognition that it's karmic the second step conscious choice to make a shift. What does that mean, make a shift? That means a conscious choice to not bring yourself to the relationship the way you have been the last 20 years. A conscious choice to bring yourself differently to the relationship. Now, what's the purpose of bringing yourself differently to the relationship? Is it to fix the relationship? What define fix? Does fix mean make it livable? Does fix mean um, survivable? No. We don't want to fix anything. We want to clear the karmic debris that brought the unpleasantness of that relationship to us. So the end result is not foreseeable. The end result could be the relationship goes a different direction. It could be that that relationship with the child dramatically improves. It could be that relationship with the brother or sister dramatically improves. It could be that relationship with the spouse either dramatically improves or permanently releases with positivity. It could be that relationship with the coworker dissolves and that coworker literally gets moved to a different department. The thing that's most important to understand is that when we bring these tools that you're going to receive today into a relationship. You cannot predict the direction it will go. What will happen is the relationship will go the direction it's meant to go. If it leaves, don't hold on to it. If it leaves, it's because the karma is complete. If you hold on to it, that means you have codependency. You're holding on to it for your own fear of loss of love or whatever it might be. If you're in the process of bringing healing to a relationship and it goes away from you, that is actually a good thing. That meant that you have resolved it and you no longer need to deal with it. Relationships do not need to be painful. The reason they are is because we respond from a pattern. You have to pay attention to your automatic pattern because if you do not see your automatic pattern, you cannot stop it. If you do, I'll repeat that, if you do not see your automatic pattern in a relationship, you cannot stop it. When you see the automatic pattern, you can apply the next step. 
Okay. How do you know when you're in an automatic pattern? Because you're irritated, you're mad, you're upset. You're in an automatic pattern. If you're not happy, then you're in an automatic pattern. That's where you have to stop it. Step one, after you catch yourself in an automatic pattern, let go of your agenda. Write it down. The automatic pattern is an agenda. The agenda to protect yourself, the agenda to be right, the agenda to be defensive, the agenda to avoid pain at all costs. When we let go of our agenda, we can do the next step. When we hold on to being right, we hold on to defensiveness, we hold on to um, the knee-jerk automatic response pattern, we cannot bring healing to the relationship. We're just going around the rat wheel over and over and over. You're already very skilled at that. That's why this step is the hardest one of all of them. The hardest step is to release the automatic pattern. So, in order to release it, you first have to see it. How do you know when you're in it? Because you're upset. When you're upset, you're in an automatic pattern. You have to see what led to that upsetness. Now, in order to dissolve it, it's going to require something that is the most hard for any of us to accomplish. We have to do what's called listening. That's very hard to do. Listening is extremely hard to do when they are blaming us, they are putting us down, they are yelling at us, they are, it's all their fault, they are pushing our buttons, blah, blah, blah. You know how hard it is to listen when somebody's being like that towards us? Very, very hard. I get it. But that is the step that needs to be done before you can bring healing to the relationship. Because the reason people repeat things over and over, the reason you repeat your auto defense, and the reason they repeat their yelling response, the reason things are repeated again and again and again is because you're in a pattern. You're in a rat wheel going around and around and around. So to break the pattern, you have to see it. You recognize the karma, you see the pattern, you choose a different response. Today, instead of responding, I will listen. Today, instead of reacting, I will listen. Today, instead of becoming defensive, I will listen. You get it? Did you write it down? You could be very surprised at the outcome. Listening is really hard to do when we, inside our own head, are going, yeah, but they did this. Yeah, but they're wrong. Yeah, but blah, blah, blah. Defensive patterns. It's really hard to listen when in our head we're going, yeah, but, da, 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 da. Because that's our agenda. We want to be right. We want to defend. Why? We want to be right and defend because we're right. Okay, that's simple. I'm right. Of course I should defend. Yes, but how has that served you so far? How has that worked for that painful relationship so far? How has that served you? probably has not brought you to where you would like to be in that relationship. So does, is it going to hurt you to try a different approach? You can be right, but you can also be in pain. So if you're in one of those kinds of relationships, you might want to consider changing it up a little bit. Listening serves the purpose of allowing the other person to decompress. Listening allows the other person to be heard. When the other person is heard and decompresses, they're no longer yelling at you. They're no longer making your life miserable. When the other person can be heard and can decompress, they're nice. Wouldn't you be? If somebody actually heard you, if somebody actually uh, listened to you, when you shared your anger and your frustration, and they said, wow, I never understood that. Wow, I'm so grateful that you shared that with me. Now I have a greater comprehension and understanding of what you're going through. That must be very difficult. That would be wonderful to hear, wouldn't it? We'd all like to hear those kinds of words. We all want to be heard. 
Well, guess what? So does the person on the other side that you have difficulty in relationship with. It could be a coworker. It could be the unpleasant boss. It doesn't matter. The agenda is your ego. If you let go of the need to be right and the agenda and the ego, you can be a good listener that has no ulterior motive other than to allow that person to decompress. Now, if there was an ulterior motive, it would be so that they stop yelling at you. So you can be the wise one. You can rise above it and go, I'm going to be the one that listens. I'm going to be the one that uh, allows this person, supports this person and letting go of their anger, letting go of their irritation. So I never said that it was easy to do this, but it is extremely effective. So you listen and you reflect. Write it down. You listen and you reflect. Well, Pamela asks, what if the person's not saying anything? Then you assist them by guessing, but you don't get in their face. I'm guessing you might be feeling this. I'm guessing you might be feeling that. You give them a little opportunity to define their feelings. Most of the time people don't share because they're not able to identify their feelings. So they just show you anger. So, so far what we've covered is recognize that it's karmic. Recognize that there's an agenda to the response patterns. Choose to stop the auto responses. Choose instead to not have an agenda to being right. And in not having that agenda, that agenda to being right, you can be in a place of allowing them to decompress by listening and reflecting. So when you listen, when you reflect, reflecting is simply repeating back to them, not exactly verbatim, but repeat back to them what you heard them say. Now, here's what happens. The person's irritation starts out here, and then you, you nod, right? Mm-hmm. Try to be sincere. Mm-hmm. Wow. I really didn't understand that. And they just, you know, and they might raise up there, go a little bit higher, 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 higher. They might be a little bit more irritated for a short period because for the first time in who knows how long they're finally being listened to. Okay, it's, So you have to maintain that open heart. You have to maintain that um, space where they can decompress. And what will happen is their sharing will bring them down. And you say, uh-huh. And you, so what you're saying is this. You, you reflect. So what I'm hearing is da 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 now, it's hard to say that because they might be saying, you, 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 you. Very hard to hear when you know it's not you, right? But in their world, it's you. So, you have to listen. That doesn't mean it's right. You'll get to far healthier communication if you allow for the decompression. So, you have to, you have to be the big one. You have to be the one that brings love to the table. And you have to go, so what I'm hearing is, you believe, da 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 And they're going to go, yeah! And they're going to go, da 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 Or they might say, no, that's not right, and then they'll clarify it. But inside your head, not on your lips, inside your head, you smile. Because you're going, great. Finally, we're getting somewhere. The... Decompression is occurring. They could have been holding on to this for months, years, but they've had no ability to release it because one of the two of you has to be, have an open heart. One of the two of you has to have the ability and the willingness to set aside the agenda of being right and be willing to simply be a listener and a reflector. Now, when one person becomes a listener and reflects, then the decompression occurs and, and the communication becomes closer, 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 closer. You can apply this towards yourself as well. This is very important. A lot of us, we pick on ourselves, we say unpleasant things to or about ourselves. 
So we have to be able to listen to the automatic response, right? Why do I automatically pick on myself? Why do I automatically say something negative to or about myself? There's a reason, there's an agenda. Protection, see, it goes down the same avenue. Am I protecting myself? Am I, um, what's the payoff, right? If I put myself down, well, I no longer with my parents, they used to put me down, so now I put myself down. I replaced my parents. This is, this is how the mind works. So you have to love yourself. And you have to go through the process of listening. Get to your feelings and so forth. So what does this do? This brings the communication with whoever that you have a relationship blocking with to a place where it can be healed. But it cannot get to the place of being healed until the pressure is taken off. And one or the other of the two people has to be the big one. One of the two of you has to step up to the plate and allow for that decompression. Now for some uh, relationships like with uh, children, you cannot have a, a communication like this necessarily. That's this an adult communication. But with the children, you can teach them feelings and needs. You can ask them what they're feeling. You can help them with feeling words and what they're needing. Doesn't you know? If 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 you didn't grow up with feelings and needs, obviously you didn't teach your children feelings and needs. So if you if they witness you and your spouse reacting and yelling at each other, what do you think they're going to do, right? And so. You have to introduce feelings and needs into the relationship. You have to introduce words that assist a person to decompress. Once you get to a place of decompression, you can bring further healing to the relationship by offering love and forgiveness. Now, of course you want to offer love and forgiveness from the very beginning. But very often, it can be quite difficult. It can be quite difficult with that coworker that constantly tries to sabotage you. It can be very difficult with that spouse that for the last five years has been cheating on you or whatever it may be, right? How do you apply love and forgiveness into those conditions? Again, as I said in the beginning, it does not make it okay. This, this process does not make it okay what one or the other of the persons has done to each other not making it okay. It's about resolving the karma. In Master Shah's book here, um, Divine Transformation, he has a story in here and the relationship chapter about a woman who came to him in his retreat. You know, I want to divorce my husband. I want to know that it's okay. He said, well, why? He has, you know, 12 girlfriends. And she said, and so he said, just a moment. They asked Kevin to open the Akashic Records, and he looked. And he saw in front of the woman, he saw, he said, he says, bloop, 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 all these souls popped up, dunk, 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 dunk. And he said, well, in a previous lifetime, you were a man, and you had 11 concubines. You had, and, and this, the husband was married to you, had to watch you have all these lovers. He said, so he's just returning the favor. He said it with more love, of course. He said, so if you want to solve the relationship karma, then you need to ask forgiveness. The woman actually listened to him. He saw her later on. She said, the relationship with my husband is much improved. He let go of all his women, now he's with me. Because she asked for forgiveness. This is what is meant by recognizing the beginning of things as karmic. Then stepping up to the plate. If the relationship is toxic, it doesn't mean you have to stay in it. What it means is you release the karmic blockages by doing what is right. If the relationship is meant to stay together, it will. If it's meant to dissolve, it will. But don't have attachments to it. Just bring love and forgiveness to the table. Bring awakening to the table. Bring a listening ear, the ability to reflect, the ability to, when that person is just dumping all over you because you have a listening ear. Trust me, this will happen. You, if you open yourself up to listen to somebody, they'll be happy to dump all over you. Okay? They're more than thrilled to do that. And it's not pleasant. I feel like somebody just rolled up a big dump truck and dumped a big pile of poo-poo all over you. That's what it'll feel like. Okay? But the hero, the person that recognizes the nature of spirituality, the person that wants to fix that relationship permanently 
they just, you know, they just wear their gold light around them. Person comes up, you have that listening ear, you reflect, they dump all over you. Okay. I love you unconditionally. I want to heal this relationship. I want to clear the debris because I'm done with this. I'm not going to repeat this again and again and again. I don't need this toxic poison going into other areas of my life. I am going to heal this here and now. You do that with love and forgiveness. You do that with listening and reflecting. So it requires one big person to step up to the plate and do it. So as I told you in the beginning, this is not necessarily something that is that is easy to apply. It's easy to understand. Right? It's very simple. Everything is karmic. Fix it. Fix it by listening. Fix it by reflecting. Bring love and forgiveness. Very simple steps. Application of it can be very difficult because of our patterns, because of our knee-jerk automatic responses, our lack of a of a, uh, willingness to be other than right, because all of us want to be right. We want to be we want to defend our position. If you do this correctly, here's what happens. The person decompresses and their heart starts to open again. Why does their heart start to open again? Because they've expressed their feelings and their emotions. You've given them that space to do so. All of a sudden, they're in a place where you have the openness for a balanced communication back and forth. And things come out that haven't been said before. Feelings and needs are expressed. You just keep applying the listening pattern, listening, reflecting, listening, reflecting. Now, of course, you want your needs heard. You need to express your feelings and your needs. Be careful. They do not have this very simple skill set that you have worked to accomplish. You go about expressing your feelings. Well, I'm feeling like you, okay, I'm feeling like you. How does that feel to you guys? I'm feeling like you. Does that feel good to your heart? I feel like you. That's not a feeling. That's a blame. So when it comes your term, your turn to express, you don't say, I feel like, or I feel like you. You have to keep your feelings about yourself. You have to express them in a way where the person doesn't take it defensively. I'm feeling upset, afraid. How many people say afraid? They'll always say upset, angry. But what's other than that? You might be afraid that they'll leave you, right? I'm feeling afraid. I'm feeling worried and concerned. Those are real feelings. Many people do not have the vocabulary to have a healthy communication. So when it's your turn to share, pay attention to their defensive responses because their ears, their ears may not hear what you are saying. They may not have that open heart where you allowed them to completely be a dump truck and they dumped all over you and now it's your turn to share and you start your sharing and they get defensive, right? Well, when they were dumping all over you, you probably was going to get defensive also, but you remember this conversation. You said, okay, I can't get defensive. I'm just going to let it go. And when you share, if they start getting defensive, look at them with love and let them know. I'm not saying you did this to me. You have to tell them that. Otherwise, they'll think you're saying that. I'm not saying you did this to me. That will bring them back down to listening stage. I'm saying this is how things are feeling for me. I'm not saying it's your fault. Then they'll listen. Can you share? You have to ask them. Can you share with me what you heard me say? So what you're doing is you're having a healthy conversation instead of a blaming conversation. Any relationship can be resolved with an open heart and listening and not having an agenda, not taking it personally. What's the alternative? Do you really want to have an unpleasant relationship the remainder of your time? Do you really want to do this again and again and again? Because that's what's going to happen. Just go around that rat wheel again. 
Yay. How exciting is that? Let's do it again, because we didn't figure it out this time. So the last things to apply is love and forgiveness. And you can apply that before the communication, during the communication, after the communication. You can apply those last steps of love and forgiveness any time. What does that mean before the communication? Applying love and forgiveness. Before you actually sit down in front of that person, you do soul communication. Soul communication is not in-person communication. It's soul communication. Dear the soul of my youngest child, please come. Dear the soul of my brother Bob, please come. Dear the soul of my husband Jim, please come. Dear the soul of my wife Mary, please come. You talk to their soul. Remember, at the soul level, the souls don't want you guys arguing. They see the personalities, the souls, uh, you know, if you're married, if, if my name's Paul and I'm married to, to, uh, to Becky, uh, Becky's soul and my soul are going, oh, come on, guys, figure it out. We don't want to have to go through this shit again next lifetime. Wake up, would you? The souls are like, figure it out, please. Personalities down here going, nah, 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 fighting with each other like two unaware people. So when you call their soul, dear the soul of my husband, my wife, whatever, I love you, honor you, I truly appreciate you. I'm so sorry that we haven't figured it out in this lifetime. I really, 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 really want to resolve this. I want to open my heart and, and do what is best for this relationship, whether it stays together or goes a different direction. I want it to be peaceful and loving. So when I communicate with you a little bit later today, I'm going to listen as best I can, not take it defensively, and try to communicate as best I can in a way where you're able to hear my heart as well. And I really want to resolve this. And I ask God, Jesus, Buddha, whoever you want to call to please bless this communication. That's an example of soul communication. That's love. You can also do forgiveness. Before you ever communicate with the person, I wish to ask forgiveness for any lifetime when I have been towards you the way you have been towards me. Because that person may be being very unpleasant towards you. And you can say, if I have been this same kind of unpleasant towards you in previous lifetimes, and you're kind of reminding me, um, because that's our karma, if I've been that way to you, God, I, I cannot bow down enough in, in apologies. I'm so sorry. And if I have not, I do not wish to um, be like this towards you in a future lifetime because we haven't figured it out. So I offer you my forgiveness, and I ask you for forgiveness. You can do that before the communication ever occurs. When you, when you come together, and you don't have the agenda, and you allow the person to share, and you listen, and you reflect, you can be silently in a place of forgiveness, in a place of love, listening. Okay? Then at the end of the conversation, when everyone's decompressed, you can again be loving and forgiving. The steps are logical. The steps are, 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 are things that can be activated immediately and bring very, very uh, positive and consistent results. And they can be activated in any area of your life with any soul. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's a co-worker or a lover. I'm telling you, this, is, this wisdom applies across the board in every relationship that is uh, not working for you. But you do need to you know, be conscious while you're working through those steps. So, it really boils down to, do you want the suffering or do you want to stop the suffering? Do you want to fix relationships? Because when you fix those one or two that are very unpleasant, it will positively impact your finances. It will positively impact other relationships. You will be happier. You will live longer. There's not a single area of your life that won't get better. Okay? Um, for those that do not have relationship right now, a physical person in their life, then have the same kind of conversation with yourself. What are you feeling? What are you needing? Give love to yourself. Give forgiveness to yourself. Communicate with the soul that you will eventually meet. Ask their souls to come. Talk to their soul. You know, uh, Ask for guidance from heaven. What can I do differently to set myself properly, because there's a reason they have not entered your life. 
there is a reason. There is some growth that needs to occur on the personal level that that person has not entered your life. It could be a lack of self-love, right? Um, do you really want to uh, bring somebody into your life where you uh, are not fulfilled and they are not fulfilled? And then you put the onus on them. My timeline yesterday, I posted a Will Smith video. Uh, he's stating something that's in my soulmate book. It's quite, quite humorous. He's like, I told my wife, I'm retiring from trying to make you happy. I'm done. That's a very enlightening statement. We are not here to make others happy, to make others happy. They are not here to make us happy. If you're not in a relationship, it could be because that is, could be, okay? That's not the only thing, but could be a variable where we're not making ourselves happy. We're not doing everything that would make us happy. Some people, some of us, we need to do that, that one job that will make us happy. Some of us, we need to do that art that will make us happy. Some of us, we need to um, dance every night, you know, for one hour and alone, close the windows. And just dance like a crazy person. That's what makes us happy. Do it. Do what makes you happy. Do what fulfills your heart. When you are fulfilled, love will come. It can be that simple. So there's no um, practice with this. This is just a teaching today. So I hope that you've learned a lot from it. As always, I give credit to my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shah. Without him, I would not be able to share a lot of this wisdom, and it would not make a difference. For those that are interested in fast-tracking some of the suffering, um, you can receive relationship blessings for you or the spouse or the relationship between you or any, uh, you know, the children, whatever. You can receive individual blessings for opening your heart, for giving. Um, you can receive blessings. And I use the word blessings, they're, 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 it's really a healing, it just, you know, it's, it's, it's blessings that clear the Shen Shi Jing blockages, and Shen Shi Jing blockages are karma blockages. So these blessings clear the Shen Shi Jing blockages, and in essence, uh, the roadblocks that are present in your relationships can be dramatically uh, uh, shortened. If, you, if a roadblock was three foot tall, these, these blessings bring it down to about six inches. It's much easier to um, work with relationship problems when you receive these kinds of blessings. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. You can contact me moving forward. I do want to remind you that I have a uh, upcoming program starting uh, May 20. It will continue for the next 52 weeks. You can join a month or three months at a time and it's called uh, 52 Weeks to Self-Healing. And I'll be going through Master Shaw's books. We'll be doing practices together, one-on-one, -on -one, question and answers. This is One Direction only, and I get to see your comments. But what I'll be teaching is a private course, and you'll be able to have one-on-one -on -one training with uh, myself and the wisdom from Master Shaw's books. Uh, so that's coming up shortly. And Kristen, uh, thank you, Kristen, will post the link um, for you to look more into that. You can join anytime. Now, you don't have to join May 20, which is the first week, but do join. It will serve your soul journey well, okay? So, love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all the beings of light who have come. All souls respectfully return. Gong song, gong song, gong song. Bye-bye, everybody. We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye-bye.